Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is going to be on the gut microbiome and thyroid connection. We did a really great podcast on it today. We'll put the full link below, so if you want a longer conversation on that, feel free and check that out. We're gonna go over the, the bacterial imbalance connection to the thyroid, as well as how the gut microbiome affects the HPA access, and we'll help put it all together for y'all. Before we do, make sure you smash that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Put your comments down below. Let me know what you think about gut microbiome and your thyroid. Do you have gut issues that you're aware of? Maybe a thyroid issue? Let me know your comments down below. All right, so let's dive in. We have dysbiotic bacteria and probiotics. So dysbiotic bacteria is bad bacteria. This is our not so good bacteria. And I have a couple of studies here I'll put in the resources below. So we have our bad bacteria is the dysbiotic bacteria, and we have our probiotics, which is our good bacteria. And normally we have a, a healthy ratio. Typically you're looking at like an 80-20, right? 80-20, 80% good bacteria, 20% bad. So 80-20 is kind of the, the ratio we like. At least greater than half being beneficial bacteria. Now what some of the research is showing, there's one study that I looked at that looked at thyroid cancer and thyroid nodules. What they found in this study is that the patients that had thyroid cancer and thyroid nodules had increased dysbiotic bacteria. In particular, they saw, I think it was the strep bacteria that was much higher. And they also saw low levels of good bacteria in these same patients. So really interesting association. One of the conclusions in that study was, hey, we need to look at potentially using probiotics using beneficial bacteria to help actually treat and prevent thyroid cancer. That was fascinating. And the reason why it is is because thyroid nodules and thyroid cancer is a strong association with autoimmunity, okay? Autoimmunity. And we know autoimmune, this is like the number one cause of thyroid issues is autoimmunity. And if they're already looking on the conventional side in the Journal of Endocrinology, they're looking at using probiotics to help support thyroid nodules and thyroid cancer, man, there's some great implications that we know there's a major, major effect. Another study I saw looked at the microbiome, the dysbiotic bacteria, and how it had a major effect on the HPA axis. And this is vital because that's the communicational feedback loop from the brain which is essentially the central nervous system to the gut or to the thyroid or to the adrenals. And it's important because the brain essentially connecting to the gut is a whole separate nervous system known as the enteric nervous system. But it's quite fascinating because when we look at the HPA axis, we have this feedback loop here from the brain. So here's our brain right here, okay? And then we have the feedback loop from the brain going to the thyroid. This is our thyroid. And then we have it going from here down to the adrenals. And then we also, let's just say we have the gut here as well. And the gut's interesting because the gut is its own nervous system unto itself. This is the enteric nervous system. And then with the brain right here, this is actually going to be, this starts off the central nervous system, right? So this is, and then we also have the peripheral nervous system, which goes to the extremities. But here's our enteric nervous system. So these different feedback loops going from the brain to the thyroid, the thyroid to the adrenals, and then the adrenals to the gut can get dysregulated with dysbiotic bacteria as a major, major role on the HPA axis. So this is really, really important. HPA axis. And that's essentially the brain. HP is the brain, hypothalamus pituitary. And then the A part is going to be the adrenals. So this could be HPA, HPT, HPG. It just depends on the feedback loop we're talking about. So you can sub HP for the thermostat to your um, heater, the thermostat to the um, air conditioner. And when we have dysregulation, we don't have correct feedback going back to the brain 
or back to the adrenals or back from the thyroid to the brain and we have dysregulation because we need to have you know really good input and output so with the, there's great communication when there's dysregulated communication the glands are not going to function appropriately and we know dysbiotic bacteria can have a major effect on this communicational feedback loop all right and we also know that dysbiotic bacteria can increase gut permeability as well which can increase autoimmunity. The more autoimmunity there is, the more stress back to the HPA axis. It's, it's, a, it's really a, a vicious cycle. So we know gut bacteria affects on the HPA axis. We know gut microbiome has a major effect on being able to digest food. We need healthy bacteria to produce good acids. Good acids help with digestion. It makes it hard for bad bacteria to grow. Good bacteria poops nutrition. Bad bacteria poops toxins, whether it's endotoxin, lipopolysaccharide, or lithocolic acid, bad bacteria poops toxins, good bacteria poops nutrients. So very important connection. So putting it all together, when we have chronic stress, and so with the thyroid, we talked about the thyroid cancer connection, but when we have gut microbiome issues, it could affect nutrient absorptions from zinc or magnesium or vitamin A or other fat soluble or really important minerals. And these important cofactors can easily be connected to the thyroid and functioning well. And obviously the more stress we have and the more dysregulation we have of the HPA axis or the HPT axis, the more cortisol and the more stress dysregulation we have. And we know cortisol and healthy HPA or HPAT um, connection or activity is vital for T4 to T3 conversion, right? Too much cortisol can have a negative implication, right? That can really thwart that conversion. So very important there. So putting it all together, we want to look at healthy adrenal function. Too, too high or too low on the cortisol side can have implications. Dysregulated cortisol rhythm can tell us that there's cortisol um, rhythm issues, which means there's HPA access issues. So normally our cortisol rhythm is like this. It's, it starts off here, it pops up in the morning, and then gently goes down like this throughout the day. And if we start to have a flatter line, or a dysregulated line where it actually goes up throughout the day, this can tell us that there's HPA access issues. We have to look deeper. So we gotta look at the adrenals. We'll look at thyroid conversion. We'll also look at thyroid antibodies. We'll look at gut function. We'll look at the gut bacterial balance. We'll make sure there's no other underlying infections. We'll also look at potentially a SIBO breath test to see how the gases are doing in the gut if needed. And also just making sure other parasites and fungal overgrowth and H. pylori aren't present either. And of course, making sure we have all of the foundational things like a good diet and being able to digest and break down our nutrition adequately as well is vitally important. So it's a complicated puzzle, but if you break it down, it's a little bit easier to chew. This is Dr. J signing off here. If you're enjoying this content, hit that thumbs up button. Give me a subscribe. Let me know your feedback below. If you want to dive in deeper yourself and get more intel on how this can be utilized and incorporated to help you get better, feel free and click below and schedule a consult with my colleagues and or myself. I look forward to helping you all out. You guys have a phenomenal day. Take care.